something happened in Indianapolis, Indiana in August of 1994 that many thought would never happen. Stock cars racing on a track that to that point had been reserved for the open wheel cars on Memorial Day weekend. It was the second largest single day sporting event in the world and fans were treated to wheel to wheel racing as they had never seen before. Since then, it's become one of the biggest races of the season, and a win today would impact many of the drivers in different ways. A Cinderella story was played out three years ago as Jeff Gordon, who learned to race here in Indiana, won that inaugural event. And today, he hopes to become the race's first two-time winner and extend his lead in the season point standings. For Terry Labonte, a win today would be the biggest of his career. He is the defending series champion. Dale Jarrett is the events defending champion. As a two-time Daytona 500 winner, he has a knack for capturing big races and a victory today would further that reputation. His teammate Ernie Irvin is temporarily out of a ride next year. On Thursday, Ernie won the pole for today's race at record speed, and he's looking to up his stock with a triumph. No one needs to finish first more than Dale Earnhardt. The Brickyard's second winner is mired in the longest winless streak of his 20-year career. Will that streak end today? And then there's Mark Martin. He's second in the series points and hopes to close in on Gordon. NASCAR stock car racing is the sport of the 90s. And today it's the richest, most attended event on the world's most famous racetrack. From the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's the fourth running of the Brickyard 400. 89 years after it first opened its doors and hosted a race, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is still thriving. Here's the starting lineup for today's race. On the pole, last year's runner-up here at the Brickyard, Ernie Urban. He qualified at a new track record. Joe Nemechek is on the front row for the fifth time this year. The second row, the defending champion of the event, Dale Jarrett, and the oldest driver in the field, Darrell Waltrip. The third row, Dale Earnhardt hoping to break a 45-race winless streak and Mike Skinner, the pole sitter at Daytona. The fourth row, Ricky Rudd, who's won at least one race for the last 14 years, and Ken Schrader, seventh here in 1994. The fifth row, David Green, a rookie in the series, and Rich Bickle, who finished 29th here in the inaugural race. The sixth row, Robbie Gordon, who finished 29th in this year's Indianapolis 500, and Bobby Hamilton in the car owned by Richard Petty. Sterling Marlin is starting 13th, the two-time Daytona. Daytona winner and Wally Dallenbach, whose father drove here at Indianapolis in the 500 13 times. The eighth row, Bill Elliott, who's never finished outside the top 10, and Jeremy Mayfield in a car owned by K.O. Yarborough. The ninth row, Rick Mass, the inaugural pole sitter, and Michael Waltrip, who finished eighth in that first race. The tenth row, Steve Grissom, who started on the front row at Daytona this year, and Johnny Benson, who led the most laps here in 96. In the eleventh row, Chad Little in his first race here, and Ted Musk Grave, who was fastest in the final practice yesterday afternoon. Row 12, we find Ron Barfield Jr., Bill Elliott's protege, alongside Jeff Gordon, 1994 winner, also the points leader. Back in the next row, Bobby Labonte, alongside Jeff Green, fastest second round qualifier. Then comes Lake Speed, alongside Jeff Purvis, the very first race for this team. Then it's Kenny Wallace and Winston-Salem's Ed Barrier. Row 16, Mark Martin and Derek Cope. Row 17, Jeff Burton and Rick Wilson. Row 18, hometown favorite John Andretti and Ward Burton. Row 19, Greg Sachs and Terry Labonte, 1996 champion. Row 20, Kyle Petty and Jimmy Spencer. Row 21 is Ricky Craven, Brett Bodine, and Rusty Wallace, 43rd in today's field. And the average speed of the field, 175.663, a new record. Eight drivers failed to qualify fast enough to make the race. There you see them. They include Hunt Strickland, who is not racing for the first time in NASCAR Winston Cup competition this year. The pace car pulls off, and let's see if we get a start now as Ernie Urban and Joe Nemechek lead them down. And we can see the cars accelerating, and Nemechek quickly down to the inside. And it appears as if everybody wants to get in single file for the first turn, and that's what's happening. Sterling Marlin, a 
Not scheduled pit stop. Almost the same thing. And we've got, oh, we a, got crash. a crash. Somebody into the wall down in the first turn area. That's Chad Little in the John Deere Pontiac. He's in his first event here at Indianapolis. Well, there is where the traction was lost and Chad slid into the outside wall. Apparently no other car involved in the incident and we didn't have a good enough shot of it to determine whether or not he was hit or just simply lost control down in turn. Second one. caution is out on lap number 15. We've had a multi-car tangle over in turn number two. Serious, serious damage to Michael Waltrip's car. Yes, we see the right side completely gone. There we see Derek Copes, Skittles, Pontiac. There we see Copes standing by the... And look, look at the damage to the right front and the rear of that car. There were other cars involved and that spun around and received some damage, but those two cars were the one that got the most. Let's take a look at what happened. Now, Cope had just made a pit stop, was uh, coming out of the pits and heavy contact against the second turn wall. Now we see Bill Elliott, the McDonald's car, going round. Now other cars are going to come into the crash, into the accident. There we see Cope already backing in the pits. Elliott goes around and Michael Waltrip Heavy hit, that's who hit the 36 car in the front. Also, Ted Musgrave, the 16 car spun. Yeah, Ted Musgrave was involved, so Bill Elliott also spun hard into the wall there on the left rear of the car and then really heavy contact between Michael Waltrip and Cope. And Ted Musgrave goes down to the inside. Here's a slow-mo, and Derek Cope is by himself. Wonder, we have no idea what caused the crash. Evidently, a flat, I would guess a flat tire or something. Ever see Michael Walter? Boom! Elliot is still going around. Ted Musgrave comes into the into the crash. There's also Bobby Hamilton going down. I don't know that Musgrave and Hamilton hit anything. Three gallons of gas. That's what he will need to run the last five laps. Well, Jeff Burton has tried everything he can to get into third position over Mike Skinner, but hasn't been able to. And now Dale Jarrett goes for the lead in the short shoot between three and four, and Jarrett goes into the lead. Wow. How impressive is that? Jarrett's car is so, so fast today. Here you go, Jeff. We might have to stop for gas. They know who's got the baddest ass car here today. <laughs> The reason for the caution was uh, debris from the incident involving Robbie Gordon. There he is coming off the corner and slamming against the wall. And there was debris that came from his car and NASCAR through the caution. To open up the, the pit road. We see the green flag in the Winston Cup official's hand. As soon as the pace car comes off the corner, he should start waving that green, which means, yep. There it is. All right. And Benny, this is a good break for Mike Skinner. As he said, he ran over the debris, thought he had a flat. Now, these tires do have inner liners to keep them rigid. But he also said... I thought Mark Martin was going to stay on the race so track. 18 car stays Bobby up. Bobby Labonte does stay out there. So does Johnny Elliott. <laughs> The 10 and 18 car stopped on lap 114. The 30 car stopped on lap 116. Hey, look, look at, at Jeff Gordon slide to the inside. He's right on Dale Jarrett's bumper as they go down the straightaway, and they'll try to pass Ricky Craven. Jarrett gets by. Gordon gets by. Bernard says, I want to race for these guys. Three seconds behind the leader. a crash will we have a caution that is rich pickle who is facing the wrong direction on the racetrack and the caution comes out with six laps to go wow well there's gonna be about three laps oh my goodness look at those cars rich pickle has spun up in turn number three and here it is from his onboard camera he's going down the back stretch we'll just listen up in the middle of the racetrack and some had to take evasive action to keep from hitting him. But no one can close up on Ricky Rudd, Bob. Nope, there are two laps to go now and Rudd is able to stay out in front by about a half second on board with Mark or with Jeff Gordon as 
since he has Dale Jarrett up ahead of him. Two laps to go. Mark Martin trying to get third position from Johnny Benson. And he will get a run off the second corner. Here they come down the back stretch. And maybe some contact there as both Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett try to get inside of Johnny Benson. And there's contact there also. And Martin is out of control and so is Benson. But they save it. Benson loses about three or four positions. Or more. He falls back to 11. That same situation. Here we come. White flag for Ricky Rudd. One more lap to go around the two and a half mile oval and more contact back here as Kyle Petty and Jeremy Mayfield make contact with each other. Look at this race as they head for the corner. There's the lead. Bobby Labonte chasing Ricky Rudd off the second corner. They're on to the back stretch for the final time in this year's Brickyard 400. Rudd with about a five or six car length advantage on Bobby Labonte. They head for turn number three for the final time. Rudd is through there safely onto the short shoot. Into turn number four and now onto the straightaway. Labonte makes a final run at him. He closes in. Will he make a move? He cannot do it. Ricky Rudd wins the fourth Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis. There is major celebration going on in the pit area, and Ernie Urban comes out with some body damage after that scramble down to the line. He finished in 10th position. Team of the 160 laps, we had 19 lead changes, a very competitive race. Six cautions held the average speed down to just under 131 miles an hour. Is he a happy guy or what? <laughs> Look at that smile. Pulling into victory lane right now is the young man from Chesapeake, Virginia. He gives Ford his 12th win of the year. Getting the congratulations of his wife, Linda. This is a young man that first made his racing mark in go-karts back in Chesapeake, Virginia. His first Winston Cup ride, he borrowed it from a friend of his from Chesapeake, Virginia. His brother and he argued over who would be the driver, who would be the crew chief, and now Ricky Rudd has come to the Brickyard 400 victory lane. And guess what, guys? He ran out of gas trying to get to victory lane.